isn't you. Jonathan. Let's leave my politics out of this thing. <laughs> oh, Jonathan, you and your stinking wit. <laughs> That's stinging wit, dear. Oh, oh, yes, of course. Let me look at it. Can you see? It's still off center. So it is. And all this time, I thought I was a hanging judge. <laughs> There's that stinking wit again. Stinging. Not this time, dear. <laughs> Hi there. Well, well, another date with Scott and I, Phyllis? Yes, and I was hoping that Scott and I might have a few moments to ourselves here before we leave. Would that be possible? Why, certainly. You can have the living room all to yourselves. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, excuse me, Mother. What is it? Um, Phyllis is entertaining a gentleman here in the living room this evening. Well, tell him to hold it down. <laughs> I'm doing my needlepoint. Oh, how nice. Uh, what is the pattern? It's one I made up myself. Charles Bronson. <laughs> In the buff. <laughs> so it is. Hairy devil, isn't he? Brother. <laughs> I think it best we leave Phyllis alone with the gentleman friend here. Uh, he happens to be a very special young man. Yes, he's asked me home to meet his parents. I think he might be getting serious about our future together. Well, that's different. Congratulations, dear. And he is a very lucky young man. Why didn't you tell me she's hooked a sucker? <laughs> oh, that's Scott now. Oh. Oh. Yes. Oh, yes. Jonathan, we never finished hanging the painting. It's still crooked. Oh, don't worry, Audrey. There's only one thing in the room that Scott's going to notice. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Hi, Come Phyllis. In. How are you tonight? How do I look? Very well. Uh, thank you. That painting's a little off-center, isn't it? How <laughs> very observant. Scott, may I speak my mind? Sure, we have a minute. <laughs> I enjoy your company, and I've grown very fond of you. You've always been a perfect gentleman with me. But there's only so much of that a woman can stand. <laughs> what do you want me to do, Phyllis? Lose control of myself? Go crazy with passion? Attack you right here in the living room? For starters. <laughs> We've been going out together for weeks now. And I've tried to be interesting and stimulating and... and exciting. And I can't even compete with a lopsided seascape. <laughs> what is it, Scott? What's wrong with me? Am I so unattractive you don't even want to touch me? What's wrong with me, Scott? Phyllis, the problem isn't with you, it's with me. I'm gay. <laughs> Things wouldn't have been any different if I were Raquel Welch. No. Oh, Brigitte Bardot. No. Candace Bergen. No. Edgar Bergen. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm leaving. Don't you want me to leave? Of course not. Is that the reaction you usually receive from people you tell? You're the only straight person I've told. You've never told your family or, or friends? 
No one. In fact, I go to great lengths to hide it. I do ridiculous things, like dating you. I didn't mean that the way it sounded. I understand. You were using me as a cover so people wouldn't get suspicious. That's why I invited you to my folks' house tonight. I, uh, I've done that with several women. It's a pretty miserable way to live, isn't it? Scott, these are the 1970s. Being gay isn't something you have to hide anymore. Oh, I know, Phyllis, but I'm from another generation. I mean, they call a person gay now, but when I was growing up, they called him other things, and uh, they weren't nice. Like gay. <laughs> oh, you mean words like sissy. <laughs> Fairy. <laughs> Pansy. <laughs> Swish. <laughs> Limp wrist. Fruit. Phyllis, I just wanted to make a point, not take a trip down memory lane. Scott, you have to tell the people you love the truth about yourself, especially your parents. I'm going to tell them, Phyllis, someday, when the right moment presents itself. Oh, the right moment will never present itself. It's only going to get tougher the longer you wait. Why don't you tell them tonight? Oh, you'll feel so much better. Tonight? Oh, my God, I wish I could. But you can. I don't even know the right words to use. And Hallmark doesn't have a card for this. <laughs> There's nothing to be ashamed of in being gay. <laughs> gay? Who's gay? <laughs> we were just talking about a, a very nice, young, attractive man we know who's that way. Just get into me for a weekend. Ah! I don't make a man out of him. I cure Valentino. <laughs> and here's Scotty when he was ten. <laughs> uh, here he is with his high school baseball team. Right there. Very handsome. Scott was all city third baseman, you know. Hit over 300. Oh. Right and left hand. Did he tell you he was a switch hitter? <laughs> <laughs> I think Phyllis has had enough of watching me grow up. Oh, I hope we haven't bored you, Phyllis. Of course you haven't. Oh, good. Well, I'll go get volume three. The college years. Oh, Mother, seriously, I think we've had enough photos for tonight. Our fellows can see them some other time, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Bill and I do get carried away with Scotty sometimes. How about some coffee? Sounds great. Oh, it should be ready by now. Would you give me a hand, dear? You were right. They're lovely people. Well, now you know why it was so tough to tell them. Yes. I also know why it's so important that you do. People like that don't deserve to be lied to. Damn it. You're right. I'll tell them now. Oh, Scott, I'm so glad. Glad? About what, Phyllis? Mom, Dad, sit down. I, I have something to tell you. What is it, Scott? Well, it's something I should have told you a long time before this, but uh, I kept putting it off because uh, the, because I'm a coward. What is it, son? Yes, what is it? I don't, I don't quite know where to start. But don't be afraid to tell us. We're your parents and we love you. I hope you can still say that after what I'm about to tell you. Mom? Yes? Dad. I can't. Go ahead, Scott. They need to know, no matter how painful it might be at first. Phyllis and I are getting married. Do you 
want to join us? Oh, there's not enough for her. <laughs> did you have a nice time? It was interesting. <laughs> what did you do? Well, we had a nice dinner at Scott's parents, um, looked at the family album, chatted, and then Scott announced our engagement. Oh! Well, well. When are you going to move out? <laughs> That's wonderful, dear. We couldn't be happier. Oh, you can say that again. <laughs> you don't understand. You see, Scott is... Well, he's... Well, he's uh, different from most men. He likes you. <laughs> no, you see, I, I shouldn't say anything. Phyllis, what is it? Well, I guess you'll know eventually. Please keep this in confidence. Scott is homosexual. No, Phyllis, no husband is perfect. <laughs> Have you thought this through? I mean, this does pose certain problems. I mean, one of you being homosexual and the other heterosexual. That's right. How would you raise the children? <laughs> no, you don't understand. Scott told his parents he's getting married because he lost the courage to tell them he's gay. But he promised me he'd tell them first thing tomorrow when he can talk with them alone. I see. But he is gay. And so there isn't the remotest possibility that he'll marry me. I guess being gay has its advantages. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think Scott should worry too much. That sort of thing seems to be more widely tolerated these days. You know, uh, homosexuality was a common practice among the ancient Greeks. Maybe that's why there aren't any ancient Greeks left. <laughs> I had an uncle who was something like that. <laughs> who was that, Mama? Uncle Wally. Oh, you don't remember him. He lived with us before you were born. But anyway, uh, do you look at Uncle Wally? You wouldn't suspect a thing. <laughs> he was a blacksmith and very macho. <laughs> he had one little habit. Come Saturday night, he liked to put on a dress and high heels, and he'd flutter around the house like Tinkerbell. <laughs> Must have been very embarrassing for you. I'll say, he looked better in my dresses than I did. I hope you found our chit-chat helpful, Dan. You see, ours is a system based on compromise, cooperation, and good old-fashioned teamwork. Best thing you can do is remember the old adage, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. So when I introduce my budget revision... My and... vote will still be no. <laughs> How's that? A little lower. Great thing. Scott. Hello, Phyllis. Good morning. Well, I just came from my parents. You told them. Phyllis, believe me, I went there with every intention of telling them, but something came up that made it very difficult. What? They're giving us an engagement party. <laughs> They've invited all the friends and relatives over to meet you. Scott, it sounds charming. And I hate to be always bringing up these quibbling, tiny details, but we're not getting married. Phyllis, they've already called everybody and invited them. Now, what could I say? Oh, Scott. I know I have no right to ask this, but could you please go through with this till after the party, for my parents' sake. Phyllis, they'll never get a chance to have another one. <laughs> After the party, I'll tell them everything, and then they can make up some story about us breaking up our engagement, and then nobody will have to be embarrassed. Oh, please, Phyllis, I won't ask any more of you. But a party? All those people! Phyllis, please, for my mom and dad. Okay, okay. <laughs> but this is the end. No more deceptions. No more no. masquerades. I promise, Phyllis, this will end your part in this once and for all. Oh, by the way, before I forget, Mom wants you to go down to Macy's and pick out your silverware pattern. 
just pulling your leg. That will be the day. Phyllis, Phyllis, is a Dan still in? <laughs> Phyllis. Hello, Mrs. Rhodes. Oh, Phyllis, you might as well start calling me Mom right now. Oh, okay. Mom. Hi there, Phyllis. Oh, good evening, Mr. Rhodes. Uh-uh-uh. Dad? Dad. And a Mom. <laughs> Phyllis, I'm Aunt Fran. Oh. oh, it's so nice to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> and hello to you, you handsome lug. <laughs> I'll bet you never dreamed you'd wind up engaged to a man like this, did you? <laughs> never in a million years. What do you say, uh, I'm Joe Cook, uh, Scott's high school baseball coach, huh? Oh, so nice to meet you. <laughs> what do you say, Scott? <laughs> Got yourself a uh, real major league brownie, huh? <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Uh, Scott's a heck of a guy, but uh, watch out. Uh, he likes to play the field. <laughs> Charming man. <laughs> Phyllis, uh, before I lose you to the rest of our guests, that they're all just dying to meet you, why don't I show you the dress? What dress? Didn't Scotty tell you? What dress? We'll talk about it later, man. What dress? But I just can't wait to see her. What a dress! <laughs> Mom wants to see if you uh, fit into her wedding gown. It's been in my family for generations. Before we do that, uh, Mom, <laughs> I'd like to have a word with Scott. It'll just take a moment. Of course, dear. I cannot, I will not try on that lovely woman's wedding gown. Phyllis, you're doing fine so far. Just keep it up a little while longer. I can't. It's gone too far. Tell your parents the truth or else. Or else what? Or else we're going through with a wedding. Oh, be serious. Scott, either you tell them, or some morning, very soon, you will wake up in Niagara Falls next to me. I'll tell them. <laughs> Mom? Dad? <laughs> Could I, uh, could I speak to you alone for a minute? Yes. Excuse us, please. You know, I've always said that love is a lot like baseball. You make your pitch, you get to first base, and then you just keep on going until you score. And then you take a shower. How <laughs> poignant. How are they? Upset. Uh, I think mainly because I lied to them all these years. They still love me. They wanted a moment alone. Oh, Phyllis, you are looking at a man who just stepped out of prison. Oh, that's wonderful. I've never felt so relieved. I, I have nothing to hide anymore. Oh, Scott, that's wonderful. I feel like I could tell everyone now. Oh, Scott, that's wonderful. I'm going to tell everyone now. Scott, that's crazy. And Dorothy, I'm gay. <laughs> Scott, I don't think you I'm gay. Carl, I'm gay. And it's... I am gay. Scott, please. And Brent. I'm gay. Scott, if I can have a word with you. Coach, I'm gay. All right. I think... You've gone far enough. Phyllis, I'm going to tell the whole world. Not tonight, please. <laughs> Phyllis, I'm gay. I want everybody to know that I'm gay and I have this woman to thank for it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Phyllis, I can't tell you how great it feels to be able to tell everybody the truth. And your parents finally accept the fact that you're not getting married. Yes, they've, uh, they've adjusted to that. And uh, Mom gave me some advice. She, uh, she wants me to hold out for a nice doctor. <laughs> Good to see Hello, you again. supervisor. How's everything going? Great. Great. You know, I got an idea. I'd like to invite you to play around the golf with me next week. Supervisor, I'm gay. Unfortunately, my calendar is full. <laughs> Never really liked the game that much. It'll probably rain. And I've got a really bad uh, trick knee. Chance <laughs> Dan. You're watching ALN. Here's what's coming next.